Hello! In this video, we're going to create a realistic product illustration in Illustrator. First, we'll draw the lines, then we'll add the color, and lastly, we'll add the shadows and highlights. So why is this useful? Well, you can create your own mock-ups to showcase your design work. You can sell your mock-ups online. And by doing this, you'll learn a ton of new stuff. Plus, it's just really cool. So let's boot up Illustrator and get started. Rightio, as with most projects, the first thing is to create a new document. The artboard size is 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to go with 300 dpi. Next, I'm going to paste in an image of the M2 MacBook Air that I've sourced online. Let's make this a little bit smaller, and then we'll go to Object, Lock, and Selection. Next, we're going to need the Swatches panel, and if you don't have yours docked here, you can find it under the Window dropdown. Next, select the Eyedropper tool and sample one of the colors from the MacBook Air. Once you've sampled a color, click the new Swatch icon, and then make sure Global is checked. And once that's done, you can repeat this step a few more times to sample a few different colors. So in this example, I end up with lots of different shades of gray, ranging from dark to light. And once you've sampled a bunch of colors, you can reorganize them as well. So here you can see me selecting one of those colors, making sure that fill is set to none, and then using the rectangle rectangle tool to draw, well, as you'd expect, a rectangle. And I'm going to adjust the size and position so it matches the outer body of the MacBook Air. Now you can also select the stroke and pick a bright color instead because black is quite hard to see here. So you can see I'm using magenta and I'm going to thicken up this stroke just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, one done. Let's copy and paste this in place. and then use the zoom tool to get in nice and close. And then from the corner, we'll scale down holding shift and alt or option to create that inside edge. Now to round off these corners, we can use the direct selection tool to click on these control points and round them off. So let's go ahead and do that for both of these, making sure that the width between the two lines around that corner is consistent. Okay, so the outer body is looking good. Next, let's draw another rectangle for the display. And then another one for the notch. Again, we're going to use the direct selection tool, but this time we're going to select only the bottom two control points and round these off. Now to make this next bit easier, I'm going to hold shift and use the arrow key to nudge this out and then use the direct selection tool to select and delete that top edge. I can then select the arc tool and hold shift and click to draw a teeny tiny curve. Let's go and position this over here and hopefully it snaps in place, which it does. And if yours doesn't, well, turn on your smart guides. Copy and paste teeny tiny curve and move this over to the other side, flip it horizontally and then line everything up. Once it's in position, use the direct selection tool to drag over where those two lines meet, go to object, down to path and select join. Do this for the right hand side as well and all of these individual lines will now be one shape. You can then adjust the position, just make sure everything's lined up. And then with all of these new notch related lines selected, select the shape builder tool over here, hover over that top edge and hold alt or option and click to cut that segment. Now this is still its own shape as you can see, so we'll need to join both sides of this shape to the main shape just like we did before. There we go, fantastic. Next I'm going to select the ellipse tool and quickly create the camera. There we go, that was uh, pretty straightforward there. And you can use the direct selection tool to select all of these bottom anchor points if you'd like to adjust the height without distorting the curves. And now it's time for a time lapse. So I'm going to build out the rest of the MacBook Air using the tools and techniques we've covered so far. And I'll see you in a moment. Now, before we move on to the next bit, this video is sponsored by Envato Elements, which is an incredible platform that offers millions of creative assets with unlimited downloads or with a commercial license. And they now offer a free seven day trial so you can give it a go and see what you think. And they offer things like video, templates, mute. I mean, just look at this list. Look at this list. It's ridiculous how much they're offering all for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. I use it all the time. I love it. And I think you will too. Check out the link below. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. For this next step, let's select both of the feet and group these together, just because we have one on either side, and then select everything, and then from the property inspector, align this centrally, just to make sure that everything is perfectly lined up. 
So that's the linear version done. Next, it's time to select individual shapes and apply some fill colors. And depending on your device, this next step can get pretty wild. So personally, I recommend using bold contrasting colors. So you can see here I'm using pink, blue, and even a bit of green, basically just so I can see what I'm actually doing. And to separate shapes into multiple shapes, you can copy and paste in place, move a copy out, use the shape builder tool to remove one half. So you can see here, I got rid of that top half and I'm going to give this bottom shape an orange color and then shift this back in. And if you use the arrow keys to shift things out and shift them back in, you know it's always going back in exactly the same position. Okay, let's finish up by adding a few more colors to the camera and then we can go to object, unlock all, select that original photo of the MacBook Air and hit delete. Wow, that is uh, <laughs> quite the clown show. So let's fix this by selecting all of these wacky and wild colors and applying our own swatches, those swatches that we created at the very beginning. And this will just take a sec, so I'll see you in a moment. There we go, color swatch is added. Now, if you do get any oddities like this, a random little bit of pink left over, you can nudge shapes out, delete it, and then move them back in. And it's always a good idea to zoom in nice and close and just make sure everything's looking good. Unfortunately, it is. So next with the main body selected, I'm going to open up the gradient panel and apply some of my custom swatches. And for this first gradient on the body, I would like a graduation from one of the darker swatches to one of the lighter ones. So I've applied these to the gradient slider. I can then adjust the angle here so we could rotate this by 90 degrees degrees and you can click this here to flip the gradient around. Now I can also move the swatches on the gradient slider to control the distribution and I can even click to add another swatch and you can see here I'm going to select the lightest color. So ultimately what I'm doing here is the darkest color I'm using is acting as the shadow and that lighter color on the far right edge is acting as a little bit of a highlight and using gradients in this way to simulate lighting is what adds more depth to the product but also helps it look more realistic. So now I'm going to add a bunch more gradients and refine the design using every Thing we've covered so far. So there we go, gradients added and everything is looking pretty tidy. Next, we're going to add some custom shadows and highlights. And as you can see, I'm starting by duplicating the main body. And for one of these duplicates, I'm going to remove that top edge. I'm going to turn this into a stroke rather than a fill and then thicken this up. I'm then going to go to object and expand, leave fill and stroke checked and click OK, and then go to effect, blur, and Gaussian blur. Let's go ahead and bump this value up and we're going to use this to create a shadow along the bottom of the device. Okay, let's go and pick a dark color, even darker than the one we had selected. And then if we nudge this up with the arrow keys, you can see roughly where it's going to sit along that bottom edge. Okay, all looks good. Let's nudge it back out and then select that bottom shape and then nudge this one up, making sure that it's on top. Next, select both shapes, go to object, clipping mask and make. And you can see our custom blurry shadow thing is now clipped to the shape of the body. And I can now move this into position for real. And if I want to make any changes, I can double click to go inside this clipping mask. I can adjust the position. The blur effect is listed on the right hand side if I want to tweak it. And then I can exit isolation mode to come back out. Next, I'm gonna add some highlights and I'm going to do this with the ellipse tool. So let's draw an ellipse and then give this a really light fill color. Once that's done, move it into position over here. This is going to act as a highlight on this left and right edge. Now you can see me editing this shape here. Uh, honestly, I'm not entirely sure why I'm stretching this up. But anyway, go to effect, apply that Gaussian blur, enter a value and click okay. 
Once that's done, shift it down and you can see I've pasted in another copy of that body shape to use as a clipping mask. And remember, just make sure that shape is on top. Then select both of them, go to Object, down to Clipping Mask and select Make. Lastly, shift it up into position and then go to Opacity and change the blending mode to something like Soft Light. And once that's done, you can copy and paste this in place flip it horizontally, and then this highlight will also appear on the other side. Now I'm going to quickly use gradients in that same highlight trick, just to add a bit more detail to the camera. Okay, looking pretty good. Next, let's go to File, down to Place, and then you can select an image or your own design work to import this into Illustrator. Single left click to add this at its native size, and we'll just scale this down and reposition it so it fills the entire screen. Make sure you send this backwards so it's actually behind the display, and then with both your image and display selected, add a clipping mask. This will crop your artwork to the display on the device. And just like before, you can double click to go inside the clipping group, and you can use this to adjust the crop. And once you're happy, just exit isolation mode in the top left corner. Now we're gonna cover a nifty trick to change the color quickly. So let's select all of that metal chassis, copy and paste this and move it down. Let's unite this all together in one shape. And if I switch into outline mode, well, you can see I did an oopsie and included the highlights by mistake. So let's just remove those and join everything up. We literally just want the body of the device. Now let's go and pick a random color. Let's go for orange and shift this back into position and change that blending mode to color. Now let's just clean up a few more oopsies I've noticed. Dear me, Dan, this is very sloppy. Let's just tidy this up. So there we go, a super quick way to change the color of the body without having to edit all of the swatches. And as you can see, I can just click through and pick any color I like. Okay, let's do another bonus tip. So go back to the blending mode and change this to normal. We'll set the color to black, that's all the way in the bottom left corner. And then go up to effect, down to texture, and select grain. And you'll see there's some sliders and a drop down on the right hand side. I've gone for stippled as the type and you can play around with the intensity and the contrast and get a real time preview of how it looks. Once you're happy, click OK. And this is how it looks, which uh, isn't ideal. However, you can change the blending mode to soft light. And if it's a little bit too pronounced, you can just reduce the opacity. And this is a very quick and easy way to add texture to your design. And the last thing to do is, well, to basically select everything and group it together, just so you can move it around as one. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did and you'd like some more Illustrator stuff, well, I've got a couple of videos on screen I think you'll really enjoy. A huge thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. And as always, take care and I'll see you next time.